Hey guys, Sorin here. So today we're talking about undervolting a desktop CPU. More specifically, uh, I have in front of me a Ryzen 2700, the normal version, not the X version. So in short, what's undervolting? Undervolting means reducing the CPU's voltage in order to obtain a lower temperature without affecting performance by any means. Why do we do this? Well, basically we want as low as voltage as we can to have a cool CPU and this can be done apart from overclocking even on a stock cooler. That means you'll get better thermals on your stock CPU cooler that it came from when you just bought it. So basically, why is this necessary? Manufacturers when they produce CPUs, they are mass produced. So in the, manufacturing pro in the manufacturing process, there are some variations. I don't know, the silicon quality variation, the actual robots, how they weld and stuff. And that means they have to set an upper margin for that voltage. So every CPU will come with more voltage that is needed. Now, why I'm telling you this, every CPU is different, knowing this. So some CPUs can overclock and undervolt better and others can't. That's just the way it is. If you are lucky, you got one that can undervolt a lot and it can probably overclock a lot if you want to do that also. Doing this is, we can do this on a desktop and on some laptops. Mind you, laptop BIOS, laptop uh, BIOS from a laptop is more restrictive. So you'll have to re use software like Intel Extreme Tuning Utility or Throttle Stop. But on desktop boards, we have a lot of flexibility. The BIOS allows us to basically set everything as we want it. So I'm going to tackle a Ryzen desktop over here, specifically because even if you're not overclocking, you're not doing something special and you don't have an aftermarket CPU cooler, because the way Precision Boost Overdrive works on AMD Ryzen. As low temps as you can get, it's better for performance because the CPU cannot boost to that much of a clock frequency if the temperature it goes higher. And it won't stay low since you don't have an aftermarket cooler. So doing this basically means a tiny bit of extra performance for free in just a couple of seconds as you shall see. So basically it's dead easy. Mind you, before we did this, we actually tested in OCCT and other programs and Cinebench to see how this machine is faring. And as you will see on screen, the results was, were pretty disappointing at start, mainly because this particular setup has a low airflow case, but the results were pretty darn good for something cheap to do and fast. So the first step is to restart the actual PC and we want to enter the BIOS. Thing that you can do very easily on the boot screen, you either press delete or F2 depending on the motherboard. And then you just need to be on the lookout for some settings. So we have a gigabyte BIOS. This system has an ORS board. We just need to look for the advanced voltage settings and on Ryzen's, we only care about dynamic vCore and we are not going to touch dynamic vCore SOC. That's something else. We don't need to bother with that one. So the dynamic vCore using page up, page down, we need to set minus zero point. Now, I know this machine. I know it can go to minus zero point zero ninety and it's fairly stable. 100% stable in all the games I play and all the programs I use. But if you're just starting out, I recommend being conservative and try something like minus 0 0.048. Just save and you will see the system just simply boots into Windows or your OS. And then you need to test. And this is very, very important, especially when you're first doing this. You need to test to see if your system is stable, if everything's okay, you don't get any blue screen of that or anything like that. Play your usual games, run some benchmarks. I highly advise to go and run OCCT and other stress software 
to make sure that you're not cutting voltage that the CPU needs in order to be stable. And while you're doing this also monitor your temperature. You'll be surprised to see that you just shaved a couple of degrees out of your CPU's highest temperature while gaming. I also noticed and monitored stuff like how much till 65 degrees and I was pleasantly surprised to see that from under a minute on the stock cooling I went to almost 3 minutes until I hit 65 degrees in something like OCCT after applying a bit of under voltage. So basically a cooler system, in some scenarios a more performance system, mind you we are not talking here about an amazing boost in performance, but it's free stuff that you can just get while investing zero, pain, zero pennies, so it's pretty cool. If this video helped you, and please note that the process is similar on Intel platforms, I just stressed Ryzen because I have a Ryzen over here. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to tell me what other videos like this would you like to see in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye.